Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of the Book of Boba Fett Review. This is Collector's Entertainment Network and I am Anthony. First and foremost, I want to tell you that this is a spoiler review. A spoiler review. So if you have not watched the episode, go watch the episode, then head on back and watch this review. Before we get into the review, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, please like the video, please comment below, I would love to hear from you, and of course, please share this with anyone you think may like this video or the things on this channel. Okay, so, The Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 5. Again, spoiler review. Alright, the name of the episode is Return of the Mandalorian, and that's exactly what it was. This was not so much a Book of Boba Fett episode as it was sort of a precursor or an, or an intermediate episode between Season 2 and Season 3 of The Mandalorian. We catch up with Din Djarin and find out what he's doing. So, if you remember last week on The Book of Boba Fett, right at the end when Fennec tells Boba that you know, credits can buy muscle, that is when you heard the Mandalorian's theme music. I didn't mention it in last week's review, although I did hear it and I did think it, but I didn't want to get ahead of myself in the review and I didn't want to, you know, I wasn't wonder, I was wondering if, if I was hearing things. So, you know, was it exactly the Mandalorian's music? Um, upon second viewing, it, it clearly was. Um, but I do these after I've watched it. I just, watch the episode and I do the review. But that was obviously a um, a sign of things to come for this episode. It makes me wonder if the Book of Boba Fett story was really a six chapter story because this is seven episodes this season. It's not eight and it's not six like the Obi-Wan series is. It's seven. But this episode kind of is, uh, is its own thing and it really has to do with the Mandalorian. Only at the very end and we'll get to that does it tie into the Book of Boba Fett? So, I think maybe somewhere along the line they said, you know what, let's stick in... You know, maybe they knew Din was coming back in the Book of Boba Fett, and, and then at some point, and this is just conjecture for me, at some point they said, instead of him just showing up, let's have an episode where we see where he's been, we set up you know, the next season of The Mandalorian, also that they don't have to do it they don't have to take an episode of The Mandalorian to do it. They can just jump into the story that they want to tell from that point on. But okay. So, we start in a meat processing plant or something like that. And Din walks in and he's basically looking for the boss. He's got a bounty on his head. He gets he gets the bounty. I mean, there's no, you know, there's a fight. He pulls out the dark saber. And in fact, in the battle with the the boss and all his henchmen, he actually, while he's wielding it, he cuts his own leg right where there's no armor. Um, but but he still gets the job done, kills all the henchmen, except for one who, at the very end, realizes, I'm just going to run away. And he chops the head off of the person who, uh, who he has the bounty on, takes the head, and gets out of there. He, he tells the workers, I got no problem with you. There's plenty of credits in the your former boss's office. If you go take those, we got no problems if you let me pass. And they let him pass and they went and got, you know, their credits for themselves. So after that, he leaves with the bounty, basically the guy's head in a bag, and brings it to someone who he wants information from. I'm not sure if that's who the bounty was on. I think this guy just wanted this guy dead or taken out of the picture, but this guy also had a regular bounty on him. But from this person, he... He really just wanted the information, um, although I think there were credits involved, and he just said, give me the information, keep your credits. After being uh, asked to sit and dine with them a bunch of times, he, he finally got the information he wanted, and that was to get him to this sort of like, it's like a planet, and it had like a circular like track of like city or something, and he wanted access to it. When he finally gets there, he gets the access, and he finds his remaining covert from the Mandalorian. 
Uh, you've got the, what, the forger or the, you know, the basically the blacksmith and Paz Vizla. And they mentioned there was three of them left, but uh, I don't think we saw the third one. So I don't know who that third one is. So when he's there, he, you know, they fix up his leg and she asks where he got the dark saber. He explains that he got it in battle from Moff Gideon. Um, and then says, does some training, which in which he just keeps fighting it and says that every, with every blow, it, it, gets heavier and she says you're fighting the saber you need to fight your opponent you know you need to you need to train and hone your skills and and use your head and and i guess basically be one with the saber um stop fighting against it then the armor oh that's it the armorer yeah <laughs> then the armorer asks where he got that uh spear from and he says that he got it from a jedi ahsoka and she says that Beskar is supposed to be used only for armor, not for weapons, because it itself can pierce armor. So to make weapons out of it is dangerous for the Mandalorians. So she says, you know, he offers it to be forged, and she asks what it should be forged for, and he asks for a specific foundling for Grogu. Don't know exactly what it is, but she starts to forge something for Grogu. Then Paz Vizla challenges Din to a duel, for the rights to the dark saber battle ensues and of course din wins but right before he about to cut his throat the armorer says that's it it's over i'm assuming she can't afford to lose anyone else so consider din the winner and he gets to keep the dark saber but she asks paz Vizla, have you ever taken off your helmet or has anyone ever removed your helmet to which he answers no when she asks that of Din, he, of course, answers yes. She then tells him, you are no longer a Mandalorian. And he asks for forgiveness and what he can do. And she says some, something about the caves and the oceans on Mandalore. And he says, but that's been destroyed. And she says, well, this is the way. So obviously that's going to be something that I think we're going to see going forward. But he gets his items that were forged for Grogu, wraps it up in a little piece of cloth we don't see exactly what it is but he takes them with him and he's on his way but he has no ship anymore so he has to board a commercial flight which is a pretty funny scene because they have the he has to check all his weapons into a briefcase um and you and the joke is that you see like literally weapons coming from every single part of his armor and body so that's the joke there and then of course he's on the commercial flight to which, of course, there's a kid, you know, in the seat in front of him, turned around, looking at him, just like in every plane ride. You got the kid in front, looking at you, waving. It, it was it was nice little touches to the episode. Finally, flight's over and he gets to Tatooine, where he goes and finds Amy Sedaris' character. I don't remember what her name is. But she had sent him a message that she had a replacement for the Razor Crest. He was thinking it was a new Razor Crest, but it was actually a Naboo Starfighter. And they, after some back and forth, they get to work on fixing it up. Get it fixed up. He really, he really likes it. But the part where the droid goes, where the astromech droid goes, has been hollowed out. And he even says, you know, why do you hollow out the astromech droid? And she said, Be knowing your disposition towards droids, I figured it was better to leave it alone. But... I think that's foreshadowing for who's going to be sitting in that spot. That will eventually be Grogu in that spot. Come on now. So he's in the front uh, flying it with little Grogu right, you know, right behind him in that little dome that they had built on it. That's pretty obvious, I think. Um, so, so that's for things to come. So then he takes the uh, Starfighter out for a test run and he flies it a little too close to a commercial flight to which two X-Wings show up to uh, sort of pull him over and they start asking him for his credentials and all that stuff. Uh, one's, you know, a young guy who, who wants everything and is going to, you know, pull him in, take him back to the station and everything. But then the older guy from, I guess, last season it was, he lets him go. He's starting to let him go, but uh, he just wants to ask him a few questions. And at that point, Mando hits like the turbo... Uh, boost and is, is he's out of there but he does eventually go back to the mechanic shop and while he's there that's when fennec shan shows up and basically says you know i got a i got a i got a job for you and 
throws him a bunch of money and he said is it for Boba Fett and she says yes and he throws the money back and says this is on the house but he says first I've got to go make a visit to uh, a small friend or something like that so obviously he's going to see he's going to see Grogu um, what that means for next week I'm not sure is he going to go see him sort of off camera and then come back either with him or without him and be in the next two episodes, the last two episodes of the season, or is him going to see Grogu going to be during next episode so we won't see Mando, we won't see Din next week, and then he'll show up in the finale with or without Grogu. Maybe he has seen him and then left him with Luke, and then he has um, come back to help Boba in the finale. So I'm not sure if he'll be in the last two or just the last one. So that is where we are at right now. I have to tell you that I really enjoyed this episode. It was great. It was just like an, it really was just an episode of The Mandalorian in the Book of Boba Fett, um, you know, under the Book of Boba Fett umbrella. But that's what's really great about what they're doing now. I love the fact that they're running this. They're running uh, Book of Boba Fett. They're running The Mandalorian. They'll be running Ahsoka. And I they had the the New Republic show, which I, I there are reports that it's being reworked into a Bo-Katan show. So if so, that would be a fourth show. Is there anything else being in that timeline? I don't know. But I just love the fact that it's at least... So it's, it's Boba, it's Mando... It's Ahsoka, at least, that we know right now, and maybe uh, a Bo-Katan show. There's three to four shows being done in the same timeline. It's building that universe where people, characters can go in and out. I love it. And especially, I love the time frame because, yes, we have the sequel trilogy, and that takes place about 30 years later. But as a kid who grew up, and even if you, you know, you, you know, you, got to see these movies much later like you're a younger fan but especially for kids our age we always wondered what happened after return of the jedi so there's a nice five five year you know break and now we're starting to see what's happening in the universe five years later we even see what happened with luke at least a little bit we know that he's obviously honed his skills as a jedi master and we know that he's training young jedi he's got grogu so we even know what's happening with luke um and we know what's just happening in the universe after the fall of the Empire during the New Republic. This is an exciting time to 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 look at and to watch and to find out what's going on. Because this is the time we always wanted to see. And yes, they did it in the novels and the comics in the expanded universe now known as Legends. But that all got wiped away. Um, so this is the canon and this is what it is going forward. And I think that with this, it will be a much more uniformed um, story between things, especially in the inter uh, changing episodes of, the, you know, of the TV shows. So this is, I, I think it's an exciting time to be a Star Wars fan, to finally find out what happened after Return of the Jedi to finally see what happened after the fall of the Empire and the building of the New Republic. Stuff we've been waiting 35 years to see. All right, so I guess that just about does it for this review. Please comment below. Let me know what you thought of the episode. I really would love to hear from you. If you're liking these, please subscribe. Please like it. And of course, please share it with anyone you think may also like it. I've also got a show on here called Star Wars Saturday Night, which drops... Maybe not every Saturday night, but it does drop more frequently than not. Currently, if you're watching this, you know, in the week or so that it airs, I've got another show called That Figures where I look at action figures of all different types. Um, I looked at my old wrestling figures. I've looked at my old He-Man figures. This past week, I dropped one about my, um, my few mint on card and mint in box original vintage can i've only got two mint on cards and two mint in box but i go over that and in the next couple of weeks i'll be looking at more recent star wars figures but all but mint on card that i got um in about 2004 2005 2006 but i've got them all mint on card a lot of them i still have in the case pack so that's going to be in the next couple of weeks on that figures i've got star wars saturday night where i go over different parts of my collection and of course here on the book of boba fett review so if any of that interests you please subscribe to the channel 
And I also have a Collectives Entertainment Network Facebook page where you can go check out and see what's going on with the page. And you'll uh, get notified there whenever I post something. And of course, if you do subscribe and you hit the notification bell, you can get notified here. All right, that does it for this week. I will see you next week with episode six's review for the Book of Boba Fett. So may the force be with you and have a good one.